So for um, number 15, we are taking the area bounded between the curves and we are revolving about the line um, x is equal to 2. So we've gone ahead and I've drawn these areas, uh, these curves, and we can see that the area bounded between them is this part in yellow. Um, so when I take this and I revolve it about the line x is equal to 2, uh, what is going to happen is we're going to have a bunch of these uh, of these cylinders that go like so. Yeah. And so when we, these cylinders, we can think of like cutting them open and them being like an infinitely thin sheet of paper, right? That is wrapped around X is equal to two. So we're going to have a bunch of these sheets that get wrapped around. Um, and then when we sum them up, they're going to give us a volume, right? Of all this whole area being revolved. So this is going to be an area, and it is an area as a function of x because we're summing it up horizontally. So um, let me draw a different section here. So if I were closer, it would be like this height, like here, that gets uh, that gets revolved like so. It would be a bit smaller and a bit taller, right? And so we're summing up just all of these. Um, all of these cylinders. Let me just erase that so it doesn't get too crowded, but just so that you guys can see the sum. Um, so this volume here is given by the sum from zero all the way out to one. So from zero to one of all these areas, right? Of all areas as in terms of x, dx. And the reason that it's um, in terms of x is because we're summing it up um, horizontally and also these areas they definitely change as a function of x right like the further that we go along the x-axis the taller that it gets and um, so it definitely changes so our mission here is to find an expression for this area in terms of x um, given that the area is just base times height right the area of this rectangle um, and so let's think about this well the base here let me do it in a different color um, we build it in gray. Well, this base right here is just this circumference, right, of my circle. Um, and now the circumference of any circle, the circumference is given by 2 pi r. And let's think about what this radius is. Um, so if I'm over here, the radius goes from 2 all the way out to this point, right? And I'm going to draw an arrow. So let's think about how we can get an expression to this point. Um, so this expression here is basically, it's the length of 2 minus this little section right here. And the reason that we do minus is because we're progressing along the x-axis in this direction, right? So it's just 2 minus whatever, wherever I'm at on my x-axis. So if I'm at the beginning, it would be like 2 minus that little chunk. If I'm further uh, along, is 2 minus a bigger x, and so on. Um, the point here is that it's the length of 2 minus uh, wherever I'm at on my x-axis. So if I take this bigger length minus the smaller length, it's going to give me this length, this arrow here, which is the radius of our circle, right? Um, so let me just remove all these arrows so it doesn't get too, um, it does not get too cluttered. Oops, that is giving me some issues. Yeah, that is right. So the radius here is just basically 2 minus x. Um, so we have here, let me draw that in, which is 2 pi times 2 minus x. That's the radius of my circumference. So this base here is given by uh, 2 pi times 2 minus x. And let's think about what the height is. Um, and so the height is, let me draw that in a... The height is this guy right here. And as we can see, um, this is just the height of the pink curve, right? It's wherever it touches it. Uh, sorry about that, it keeps opening up different tabs. So wherever it touches this curve here, that is going to give me my height that gets revolved about um, x is equal to two. So basically it's wherever it touches it. Um, that's pretty easy. It's just the curve x to the power of four. Um, and so my area is base times height, so it's two pi times 2 minus x times x to the power of 4. And I'm just going to distribute this. So it's just 2 pi times 
uh, 2x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 5. Let me just double check that my math is correct. Um, yes, it is. And so now I'm ready to set up my volume, right? Because my volume is the integral from 0 to 1 of these these cylinders defined by the, the rectangles and the area of each rectangle is given by this expression right here. So at any point in x, I just plug it into this expression and it will give me the area. So I put 2 pi outside because it's a constant and then I'm going to sum up these 2x4 minus x to the power of 5 dx. Um, so when I integrate it, this is going to give me 2 pi times, let's see, um, this gives me 2x to the power of 5 over 5 minus x to the power of 6 over 6 evaluated from 0 to 1. Um, so I don't need to evaluate the lower boundary because it's just going to go to 0. And this gives me um, 2 pi times, let's see, uh, 2 fifths minus 1 sixth. So when I put this in my calculator, my volume is going to be, let's see, um, that is 7 pi over 15. And that is what I get when I take the area between these curves and I revolve it around the line x is equal to 2. Now remember that we're just summing up a bunch of areas whose base is defined by 2 pi times 2 minus x, right? Because that's the circumference. And whose height is defined by wherever it touches that pink curve.